Bradley to Batman PC and today I'm making this tutorial for you guys. In today's tutorial we're going to be talking about loops. What a loop is, it's where you take a condition and it'll repeat a certain code over and over again until that condition is no longer met. In games you'll see a lot of times it'll say, if you come within a certain distance of the solid, keep moving closer to it little by little until you've hit it. But that's the kind of situation we're using and that, that way it'll, it'll you have a precise collision in the game and it looks nicer. And one time when I used it was I was doing a programming challenge where I had to find out what the, I believe, 50th Fibonacci number was. So I, I'd run the Fibonacci code in the loop and I'd say, keep running through the Fibonacci sequence until you reach 50th number. And that's the kind of situation where you'd use loops in. So there are three types of loops I'd like to talk about today. And those are while loops, do while loops, and for loops. So first talk about the while loop. While loop's the most straightforward. The way the while loop is, it's set down while, parentheses, and in between the parentheses you put a condition where you say this variable equals 3, this variable is less than 5, this variable, and something along those lines. And then if that condition is met, it will go through the code between the point brackets that follow. And anything can go through in, in that code really. So just keep repeating until the condition between the parentheses is met. So it's possible that if you, if you don't design your program very well, that condition is never, never met and it'll just keep going infinitely and, you can, and your program will never end. So that's something you need to be careful of. And well, that, that's true for all, all loops. Okay, the next loop we're going to talk about is a do while loop. So this one you type down do, and then you put, type down pointing brackets, and you, in the pointing brackets, put down what you want to do. And then after that, type down while, and then you put the parentheses and the condition in the parentheses. And this do while and while basically work the same way. Okay, and then the third and last loop we're going to talk about today is called the for loop. Now the for loop is my probably my favorite because it take, take, takes into account more than the, the while or do while loop. So the way a for loop works is you put type down for in parentheses. Rather than have just a condition in parentheses, there's actually three parts to it. There's the initialization, condition, and increment. In initialization, you create a variable or maybe a few variables. That is what you want it to be in the beginning of the for loop. That's how you want the variable to look like in the beginning of the for loop. And next is the condition. At what point do you want to exit out of the loop? And then the last one, the increment, how do you want the variables to change every time you go through the loop? So an example would be you'd say you create integer i equals zero in the in the initialization, and for the condition you say if i is less than five, or sorry, no, no if just i less than five, and for the increment you might say i plus e is i at one. And so that way it'll go it'll go through it five times. And so you can control exactly how many times it goes through it. And you can also use it for situations where it's unclear how many times to go through it. So that's what I like about for loops. So anyway, and so now I'm going to teach you how to use all three of them in our tutorial. All right, so I already named my file. I call this one Loop Dr. Pepper. You'll find out why we named it Loop Dr. Pepper in a second. But for now, we're going to create a public class in the main method. All right, and that's that's all done. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're, we're going to be practicing loops, as you found out, in the, as you saw in the abstract concepts. And we're going to print out all the lyrics for the song. It's like the road trip song, or 99 bottles of something on the wall, 99 bottles of something on the wall, 99 bottles of something, take one down, pass it around, 98 bottles of something on the wall, and then it keep go keeps going until you don't have any bottles left anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, or I'm going to make it int, call it int i, and we set equal to 9. When, when we finish it, we're going to set equal 99, and it'll, it'll go through all the lyrics. Cause so this will represent how many, how many bottles we're going to start with. And right now we're going to do while loop. I'm actually going to do the same thing three times, and I'm going to show you how to do it for the while loop, the do while loop, and the for loop. So right now we're going to do the while loop. I'm going to say while i does not equal 1, because we're starting at 9, we're going to keep going down until it equals 1. And when it equals 1, we want it to break out of the loop. And then every time it goes through that, we're going to say i minus minus. Your system that out dot print out. I'm gonna put some put some text here. That's gonna be the first verse of it. But um, for now, I'm gonna explain the concept of the while loop. So, so I'm a little calm here to explain the while loop. All right. So th that's how that works. And all right. So now I'm gonna print stuff out. The first line is 99 bottles of Dr Pepper on the wall because this one would be Dr Pepper. So we could say I because the, that's the first number plus bottles Dr Pepper. And now I'm just gonna put a plus sign here and go on the next line. You can't spread strings that strings like this out over multiple lines, so I'm I'm just going to uh, periodically put uh, put a plus sign, make a new string, even though we're not finished with the string yet. Because so now we've got nine bottles of Dr Pepper on the wall, and then we're going to say nine bottles of Dr Pepper. Now that's the first line. Now the second line in the refrain is going. So we're going to move to the next line for that. So remember the slash and symbol signifies we'll move on the next line. Take one down and pass. take one down and pass it around, and then it goes down one because now 
one's one's um, one's been taken down. So we say i minus one. Okay, so we got this this whole code that's executed every time we go through the while while loop. And first we'll go through it with nine. So say nine bottles, nine bottles. Then right here it says i minus one. It'll say eight bottles. Then it says i minus minus, which means subtract nine by one or subtract i by one. And then we've got an eight. And I'll go through this again. Say eight bottles, eight bottles, and then seven bottles. And it'll keep repeating that process until we're down to one bottle. And once we're down to one bottle, it'll move on to this code that we have here, which is going to be basically all this lyrics we have here only for one. So I'll just type that down. Okay, so now I've basically retyped that whole refrain that we did in the loop, only for one. And now we're going to add on the final refrain, which is when you have no bottles left. So at this point, we'll, we'll just type down how many we started with. We could make a new variable to to use right here, but since we're only using it at this one spot, it's really we might we really might as well just use it like this. Whew. All right, that was a mouthful. So, but look at this. We did some 20 lines of code, and when we print it out, so we'll compile it, and then I made a few mistakes here. It appears I've got to put a plus sign right there. Yeah, I'm gonna save it again. And try and compile it again. Oh yeah, that was a pretty easy fix. So now we're gonna compile it. No, now we're gonna run it and see what happens. So here we go. You can read through this and it'll match the lyrics of the song perfectly. There's one thing I want to change though. I want there to be another line skipped at the end of the, the te refrain that you're looping because that way it'll, you can tell the refrains apart. So now we're going to it, we, so now we can change this to 99, I equals 99, and we can change 99, and remember, we have 20 lines of code, and then with it, we should be able to print out over 100 lines of code, which I think is pretty cool. So compile, and run. So look at this, we have the, all the lyrics pointed out, uh, printed out for the whole thing, over over 100 lines of code, uh, 100 lines printed out, and it doesn't even fit in the command window, see, it, uh, it, can, it starts at 98 right here, because we can't scroll up that far enough. Now we have the whole thing printed out. So now it comes to the boring part, or the interesting part as the case may be, where I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing, only with different types of loops. So I'm going to save this as something else. This one was doc with Dr. Pepper, and the next one we're going to do with Cherry Coke, because I don't want my videos to... I want them to be unbiased and su support neither Coke products nor Pepsi products. So this will be Cherry Coke. And now, now this next one's going to be a do-while loop. So the what you do is you take this while section and put it at, af after the last thing and type down do. And that's it. I'll type down the difference between do while and a while. Do while. Okay. So the do while loop will we'll run the, the code at least once even if the condition is not met. So um, in some cases you would always want want the um, want the, the loop to run at least once because often it's important stuff in there that's used later on. And if it's not ran, ran at all you would have problems. So in this case, if we set i equal to 1, we'd want to skip the loop because we, we, we have 1 taken care of after the loop, but as like I said earlier, there's certain times when you want it to run it no, no matter what, and there's also times like this where it's okay to skip the loop. I have to do while loop, oh, and now I'm just going to use Control F to replace Dr. Pepper with Cherry Coke. Sorry, I'm a bad teacher. You have to put a semicolon after the while at the end of the do while loop. And another thing I forgot is that I told you from day one that the name of your class needs to, needs to match the name of your file. So we need a cherry coke, so we gotta make sure that the match that in the code. There we go. So now I compile it successfully. Loop cherry. Now we're gonna run it, and it should come exactly the same way it did just now, which it does. Only it says for cherry coke. Last one. File save as. Next is gonna be called cream soda. It's still on bias because, to my knowledge, neither Pepsi or Coke can make cream soda. So loop cream soda, and next one we're gonna talk about is a for loop. So if you if you pay attention to the um, while do while loop, there's there's um we do three things revolving around this variable i, and and they are very important for the loop to work properly. First, you initialize it, and then you create a condition with the with that variable to to show how how long you want it to run, and then in the in the code you put down what you want to happen every single time. So the for loop basically notices that there's these three things you use the variable and takes them to account in the first step. So now we can, we'll take this while away, we'll take this do away, we're going to take this i minus minus out in the code, and we're going to take away the int variable. Alright, so now, now for is typed down for and put in the parentheses, put parentheses, I'll put two semicolons. So 
three sections here. You got before the first semicolon, between the two, and after the second semicolon. But before the first semicolon, that step is called initialization. So it's the variable you want to create it at the beginning of the loop. In this case, it would be i, our i equals 99 that we had earlier. So I'll just head down into i equals 99. Be sure to put down the int because we're still defining the variable. Then comes the condition, which is i cannot equal 1. And while that condition is met, the loop will continue. And then we want what we want to happen to i every time the loop is completed. So i minus minus. Oh, a lot of people like this one better because it takes into account. It's just cleaner because it, this is done in one line while the while and do while loops do this in far and it will not far more uh, just a couple more lines it's, it's really it doesn't matter which one you use but a lot of you like the for loop for that reason so I'll change this so now we've done that now I'm gonna use my handy dandy control F to switch out cherry coke with cream soda I really could have used control R I don't know cherry coke cream soda place all Yes, wonderful. And change the title this time. Last time I forgot. And cream soda. All right. So that is our code for the for loop. And compile it. And now run. Runs through everything. Fine, just like did earlier. Only now use the for loop. All right. That is all for this tutorial. It's nice to know how to work with loops. If you stick around for the challenge, to see how well you understood it. All right. So here's today's challenge. Let's say you're a freshman in high school or you're in late middle school and you're learning about algebra and how to, how to draw graphs and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> if, you're, if you have a similar education background as me, you um, had to take these little train track things where you type down, or you not type, you write down the corresponding values for when you plug in numbers to a curve or a, a graph. So if, in this case, if you have the equation 5x plus 3, you have to type down if x equals 1, then y equals 8. And you have to do that for several numbers and just a lot of plugging in, and it can be annoying. I would recommend probably just plugging in numbers and going ahead because it helps you with your mental and math skills. But if you don't want to do that, then you can do this as well. So the chase challenge is to make a program that will plug in numbers for you and tell you what they are when you plug them into the formula. You can change on the formula in the code, but this this is written with the formula 5x plus 3. Maybe you can figure out a way to do that with input, but we'll see. So um, I called it alg loop, algebra loop, and here we go. Formula 5x plus 3 f of negative 5 equals 20, negative 22, f of negative 4 equals negative 17, and there you go, all the values are right there for you, so it will make it so much easier to graph now that you know that. So, that's today's challenge. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please comment, or like the video and comment just to support the, the channel, and if you would like to see more, you, you could subscribe and you'll uh, be notified whenever I make new ones. If you um, found this challenge helpful and would like to try out some more, I have a list of challenges on my website, cineforge.co. You can also find my games and a list of my tutorials. For now, just gaming tutorials, but I'll be adding on Java tutorials soon. So the website's a work in progress, and if, if you have any critique about the website, I, I would be happy to... to uh, actually, I'd really appreciate it if you, if you told me about it so that I can make it better, make it, make it actually the, the best... so I can make the website as good as possible. So. With that said, I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.